whether it's looking for the nearest coffee shop or uploading photos to Facebook or checking the name of that actor in the TV show that you're watching. Apps let us do all these things very quickly and on demand whenever we want to do them. You can think of them as shortcuts. So instead of having to do a web search, they take us straight to what we want to do. Now a key signifier of an app is the visual icon that represents it. So if you think about the Facebook F or the Twitter bird, the Wikipedia W, the Amazon shopping cart, those logos are highly evocative. And they suggest that apps are very much tied up in their external packaging. Apps are also plentiful. And they span a wide variety of, care of, of, of categories. So the last time I checked on the Apple Store, um, I think there were over 700,000 apps available for download. Um, and they were spanning a ton of different categories, like finance, music, games, um, personal lifestyle. It's really quite remarkable. So they're really plentiful, but importantly, they're not infinite. And within any given app, what the range of actions that you can perform is limited by the choices that the app developer has made in terms of the design and the software. So it's my argument that today's young people are growing up not just in a world that is full of apps. They're actually, they've come to see the world as a collection of apps. Their lives as a string of ordered apps. Um, if they want to know the dates of the French Revolution, as the iPhone slogan goes, there's an app for that. If they want to find um, the best uh, deal on a pair of new shoes, there's an app for that too. If they want to paint a picture, write a song, or talk to someone, you get the idea. There are apps for all of these things. Uh, the app mentality suggests that whatever human beings desire should be available by, be provided by apps. And if the app doesn't exist, one should be created right away. And if one can't be created, then perhaps the original desire just doesn't or shouldn't matter. So the big question is, is the app mentality good or is it bad? In many ways, living in an app-suffused world is a wondrous thing. So apps are terrific when they take care of the ordinary stuff and then free us to really explore new paths to form deeper relationships, to ponder the really important mysteries of life. It's my contention that when we use apps in this way, they're app enabling. However, there's a less optimistic view of apps and the app mentality. So there's a danger that we become dependent on apps for the answers, for social connection, for our sense of ourselves. There's a danger that we look to apps before we look inside of ourselves. And when that happens, we become app dependent. So my colleagues and I have been exploring this tension between app enabling and app dependence by examining three spheres of experience that are particularly salient for young people. Those are personal identity, intimate relationships with other people, and the way young people exercise and express their creative and imaginative powers. We call them three I's, identity, intimacy, and imagination. So let's take a look at each one of these I's and consider when the app mentality is enabling and when it engenders dependence. So first, identity. So as I mentioned before, apps are very much wrapped up in their external representation. And you can actually think of the array of apps on someone's phone or on their tablet almost as a fingerprint of sorts. But instead of the particular and unique pattern of bridges, it's the collection of interests and habits and social connections that identify a person. And if we think about an app identity in that way, it's very multifaceted and it's highly personalized. Um, but it's important to remember that it's also constrained by the decisions made by the app developers. So the most obvious example would be the 140 character limit on Twitter. So the app metaphor suggests that when we use apps as a starting point for self-expression, they can in many ways expand and enrich our sense of identity. 
However, if we become dependent on them for the range of our self-expression, they can push us into prepackaged and superficial identities. So what about intimacy? So as I noted, apps are shortcuts. And when it comes to relationships, such shortcuts can make interacting with people quick, easy, and also less risky, because you don't have to confront someone face to face. And when shortcuts are used in moderation, and to augment rather than replace face-to-face -face interaction, they can really support meaningful interactions and relationships. However, when they're used to replace rather than augment um, personal face-to-face um, -face interactions, that's when we're in the danger of superficial ties and diminished intimate relationships. <coughs> Lastly, imagination. So a sizable portion of the app ecology is devoted to artistic production. So there are apps for drawing and painting and music and just about any artistic genre you can imagine, there are apps available. And digital media in general open up exciting new avenues for young people to express themselves creatively and artistically. But just as we saw with identity, Creative expression, artistic expression, is limited by the choices made by the app developer. So for instance, if you are using a painting app, um, your color palette is going to be limited by the hues that the programmer has selected and programmed into that app. If you are using um, a music composition app, your tonal range is going to be similarly um, constrained. Now of course there are always going to be sophisticated users and some of you may count yourself among them um, who can develop their own workarounds and break free from the constraints that the programmer has built into the app. But realistically, most of us are going to just work within the parameters of the app and that raises important questions of how such constraints affect the artistic process. So where do we go from here? There have been really amazing technological changes from the time that I was a teen to the time my sister started um, high school. Really incredible. Um, what's going to happen next? I have no idea. Maybe the CNN hologram will make a comeback. I'm not sure. Um, but whatever is in store for us, it's really important that we ask ourselves a big question. Are we going to become increasingly app-dependent or app-enabled? So my talk is a call to all of us, and not just young people, to take this opportunity to pause and consider what habits we're developing in this app-centered world. Are we using technology as a starting point, or are we relying on it to do our thinking, to do our connecting, to do our self-expressing? It's really important that we take the opportunity to ask ourselves these questions at this particular point, because we're right at the start of the digital era. And so we need to take the opportunity to pause and reflect so that we can take control of how we introduce new technologies into our life. Thank you.